Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back. Um, I do apologize if the connection is weak, but, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, like, after everything that's happened to me, it's like, it's, it really is hard to, you know, be successful at anything. Like, you know, and that's my issue is that, you know, like, I'm good with a bunch of things. I know that. But I keep getting bounced around from thing to thing because, like, you know, with, like, I started doing artwork, okay? And then, you know, I went from doing that into doing music. Which led me to doing music for many, many years. Like, that led me to doing music from, like, 2010 to up till just very recently, which is a long time to do music nonstop. But, you know... You know, like, it's tough. Sorry, guys, I was sitting here watching it. Don't judge. I do watch Grey's Anatomy, which is on right now. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between that and you guys. It's new episodes. But, you know what I mean? Believe it or not, man, um... That book was actually released a while ago. Like, I released that, like, a long time ago. Like, one or two people bought it, but that was it. And believe me, it does suck. Because one of the guys, or one of the people that actually bought my book was like, Dude, when's the next one coming out? I want to find out what happens next. And I was honestly excited about that. But... And I was going to do a second book on that, but, you know, with them suspending my account on Lulu.com, I can't do that anymore. And that sucks. Like, that really does hurt me a lot. Because, you know, like, I want to make art my living. Like, I want to be able to say, hey, you know. The art that's on this shirt, that's in this book, that's on this cup, that's on these things, are my own. And people don't understand that everything I do... But people just don't understand that everything I do is my own. I've had people tell me, oh, you know, you're taking other people's... Like, you know, I've had people tell me, oh, you know, this isn't really your work. You're taking other people's work. When that's not true. Everything I do is my own. Everything I do is 100% my own. And people feel like they can take advantage of me and take my stuff and claim it as their own. Knowing I don't have any money. And, and they take it for the stupidest stuff stupidest reasons on earth like the most petty of reasons all right yeah we're still good sorry about that guys i'll check on my thing i was checking my charge while and it's like like 38 so we're good for a while but you know like i had one guy take one of my best Art pieces that I planned on turning into a sticker. I was planning on turning it into a sticker, which I still am. If I can, I would like to. I'd very much like to do that. Um, he actually took it from me. And then I took it back from him. 
And he straight out said, he's like, oh no, this is mine. And plus, you look weird, so why would I let you have something when you look weird? I'm like, what does looking weird have to do with art? Uh, what does looking weird have to do with what kind of artwork I put out? Yeah, I do strange and unusual types of art a lot of the times, and a lot of you guys enjoy that stuff. I even enjoy doing it. I mean, I have a possible opportunity to showcase some of my artwork at an odd mall this September, hopefully. Thanks to my friend, Zach, or Possessed One, more personally known as Possessed One. Um, but, like... He even enjoys a lot of my art. I've had people like my good friend Matthew here telling me, you know, why are you not getting paid for your art? I've had people like my good friend Rebecca who watches a lot of my live streams saying, you know, like, you need to be getting paid for this. Why aren't you getting paid for this? Why are you not getting paid for the artwork that you put out? Well, like I said, the answer to that, I actually answered in... The previous live stream in my last live stream and that is because of the fact that nobody takes me seriously and I mean nobody takes me seriously that's because I didn't go to the classes I'm self-made I'm self-taught and nobody wants to take me on for that reason because I never got the chance to graduate high school which means I never got to take the classes that I wanted to take to actually get somewhere. Exactly, and I completely agree, man. I really do, man. Like, I agree 100%. But, like, you know, I've got over... I want to say like 200 some fans. Like I can tell you guys in just a second here. I do have a very good solid amount of followers on my Shadow Link art page. I've got like 200 and something people who enjoy my work. Like, you know, people don't understand that, you know, like they say, oh, you know, like that's good to have a dream, you know, like do your, like, you know, that's okay to, you know, have a dream and, you know, want to be able to do those things. Like when I was in Florida visiting my dad back in 2014, you know what my dad told me? He was like, oh, that's, that's nice to have a dream. But you also need to be serious and, you know, get a real job. And I'm like, I can't get a real job because of my record. And I don't think he understands just how hard it is to get a job anymore with or without a record. Because everything's gone online. It's harder now to get a job because everything's gone digital than it was back then. Back then, you could just walk up to a person... Sign a freaking application and be like, hey, you know, welcome to the job. When do I start? But now you have to do it all online. They have to go over it. So it's a lot harder than people realize. It really is. Like, it's much harder now than it used to be to get a job. And I tell people that, and they're just like, wow. But as of right now, as far as my Shadow Link art page goes, I currently have 238 likes on it. I have 238 people that enjoy what I do. And a lot of you guys I know, personally and not personally. Like Matthew, I know you liked my page. Um, my good friend Randall, Ethan, a lot of my good friends that I know personally liked my art page. Not all of them are friends. A lot of them are random people, which I'm fine with. I welcome that. The more people that like my art pages, the better.
but you know I do have a YouTube channel for my artwork I have a deviant art I have an art station now thanks to my friend Danny Poison who if you guys don't know he is one of the guys that helped to create game series like Assassin's Creed Tomb Raider um, or more notably one of my personal favorites the Splinter Cell series which I'm a very big fan of. I love the Splinter Cell game series. It's honestly one of my all-time favorites for sure. Um, also, he's helped out with games like Prince of Persia. Like, I own Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. I'm hooked on that game. I love it. A great game. He's done, like, a lot of games through Ubisoft. So, you know, I've kind of had him there to, you know, say, hey, you know, this is great. I like this. Like, he even likes a lot of what I do. So, you know, it's kind of nice to, you know, have that professional opinion from somebody who actually does artwork and stuff themselves for a major company like Ubisoft. And I've even gotten, you know, notable comments that I've honestly saved to my computer. I've actually screenshot and saved all these comments but if you guys go on to the Jason David Frank official fan page every once in a while I'll post up some artwork on there for Jason and he will just be like dude this is awesome artwork I love this you know and like he really likes you know what I do and to have you know one of your childhood heroes you grew up watching you know, commenting on your work and saying, hey, this is great, you know, that's a major step. And you got to figure, guys, Jason David Frank was the original Green Ranger, the original White Ranger, um, the Red Ranger and Turbo and Zeo, as well as the Black Ranger for Dino Thunder. And then he also came back in Super Mega Force as a cameo Ranger, as well as the new... Power Rangers movie that came out so you know like he's definitely a major icon and to have a worldwide icon like that comment on my artwork and say hey I like your work this is really good thank you like you know that means a lot like you guys don't even know the level of like you know gratitude that I have towards him and him even saying, hey, you know, like, your artwork's really good. Like, you know, that really does mean a lot to me. Because I even wound up doing, um, if you guys don't know about Bloodshot by now, he is playing the role of a comic book character known as Bloodshot. Well, I went in and I did a Bloodshot art piece for him and sent it to him. And he was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, he absolutely loved it. He thanked me, like, everything. Like, you know, like, it's people like that that, you know, really do push me to keep me going along with you guys that do support my art. Oh, my God, I was sitting here reading a comment from Matthew. Right, exactly, and believe it or not, like, that's what I did, man, like, that's exactly what it is, I kept going at it and going at it as a kid, and got it right. I mean, yes, I'll admit, I use, sometimes I do use programs like Hero Machine 3 to create my comic characters, but people love the way I take it. I take it in directions nobody else thinks of. Because, see, when I see a game like... You know, like games off of, like, say, Doll Divine or Rin Mari games. To me, that's not just a game. I see opportunity. I see artwork ideas. I see, you know, opportunities to make something that nobody else can do like I can do. Like, that's what I do. Like, I will take something from nothing. Like, I'll take something like a random background. 
like just a random ass background off of Google that I like, you know, or I think would look really cool. And I take and I mess with that background. I'll take and I'll add stuff to that background to make it a work of art. Like, I'll take and I'll sketch over it. I'll draw over it to make it something unique. I'll paste the character to it to make it look different and unique and something that nobody else has seen before. But, you know, it's, it's sad at what people think about, you know, what I am worth. Like, you know, I've had people taking a lot of my work for a very long time now. And a lot of people don't understand that, yes, I do do music. And I'm going to continue to do that no matter what. You know, I'm still going to continue to do music. But at the same time, I need to be focusing on my artwork. I've had people that I don't even know saying how good of an artist I am. I've had people like... You know, many of people, just in general, asking me every day, why aren't you getting paid for your artwork? You are very good at what you do. Like, I mean, and you guys have seen my artwork in the past. You guys have seen a lot of my hand-drawn stuff. And, you know, and I've been drawing, like I said, I've been drawing my entire life. Like, it runs in my family. My sister, my niece Cassandra, like, a lot of people in my family do draw. My great-grandmother drew and released a book. And all those pictures that are in that book, she drew by hand and released it. And we still have the very first original one that was ever put out. Like, we still have it. We were the first ones to receive the original release copy. So we still have that. What up, man? What up, Chris? But, like, you know, I do draw inspiration from different styles, you know? Like, whether it be anime, whether it be comics, or old school cartoons, or even graffiti art. Because, you know, graffiti art is kind of, you know, dying off. So, the works of art that I put out that are graffiti related, that's just basically me, you know, trying to keep that art style alive. But every day I get the same question. Why aren't you getting paid for what you do? Why aren't you making any money off this? Why isn't anybody buying your stuff? Well, the simplest question to that is because people come up with excuses. They always give me the excuse of, Oh, I don't have the money right now. Or the fact that, Oh, this is too much for this. And I know those are excuses because they'll say that they don't have money to buy my work and then next day they'll make a post on Facebook showing something they bought later on that day with that amount of money that they could have bought an art piece off of me for. Or people just in general want shit for free and I'm not willing to give my art out for free unless I feel that person truly and really does deserve it. Like, you know, one of my biggest fans, like I mentioned in the last live stream, Snowbell. You know, she can't afford to buy my artwork. Because she's in another country. She doesn't have that kind of money. So, you know, I do hook her up with some free art pieces of mine. Because she supports it so much, she's always asking me, like, hey, you know, when's your next, you know, art video coming out? Or when are you putting out more artwork? Like, she's always asking me that, like, every day, and I love it. I love to see people like that asking me about that. 
So, you know, like, it really does mean a lot to me that people, you know, do enjoy my work. But what pisses me off is when I see somebody that supposedly wants to buy my art, but then goes out and spends that money on something stupid the next day. Like a pack of cigarettes or a six-pack of beer. It's like, really, you guys said you didn't have the money to buy my art, but yet, here you sit with a freaking 12-pack of beer and a thing of cigarettes. Like, instead of helping me out, you guys decided to do that shit. And that's what really upsets me and pisses me off. But, you know, like, and people don't understand, a lot of these major companies don't understand that, you know, art is art. No matter how you do it, it doesn't matter whether you take a random background and a random image and put the two together and, you know, do swirls on it or whatever. Like, you know, artwork is artwork. But I'm here to tell you guys right now that everything I do is original 100%. Everything I do is completely original. Like, unless you type my name in, you probably will not find it on Google. And believe me, I've typed my name in, and I've actually found a lot of my artwork on Google. Like, it's funny. Like, I found, like, links to my DeviantArt, my sound, my old SoundCloud that isn't even up anymore, which I don't know why they still have that. But, like, you know, like, and people just don't understand that, you know, doing artwork is my livelihood. And, you know, what I want to do with my artwork and the money is to use it to fuel, you know, me doing my YouTube videos, me doing my music. Like, I wanted to fuel all those things. But unless I get people buying my artwork, you know, how can I push all my other stuff? How can I push everything that I want to do? I can't even put out an album right now because I have no money. Well, yeah, I could put out an album for free on YouTube, no big deal. But, like, to get paid for my music that you guys all love, unless you all start buying my artwork, I can't push that stuff. You know, I can't push the things that I want to do. I can't push to buy a new computer to do the things that I need to do to keep everything going for you guys. So, really, ultimately, you know, my artwork depends on people buying it my future and the stuff i want to do depends on everybody buying my stuff but my issue is along with all that is the fact that i don't have people to help market my stuff properly because i never got the chance to take business classes in high school for some reason they would not allow me to take business classes for whatever reason which sucks because back in high school, like, even in my science class, you know, I would get, I would get so bored because science just never really, I just never really got into science. So what did I do during class? I sat down and I drew half the time. And I, it got on my teachers, on my science teacher's nerves so bad. Like, he was a cool guy. Like, he was really laid back, awesome guy to be around. Like, he was honestly one of my favorite science teachers ever. But he knew that I drew so much and that I wasn't really into science. So what he did is instead of making me do that science crap that just literally made me fall asleep. Like, while I was sitting there listening to music in class, you know, I would have my headphones in because he would allow it. Like, he would allow us all to, you know, sit down What's the music while we're doing work? Well, I would sit down, I would listen to my music, and he would actually grade me as if I was doing science. 
when I was really just turning in artwork pieces to him. He was allowing me to do that because he knew that science wasn't really something I really got into. Like, you know, like certain types of sciences I can get into, like, you know, circuitry, how stuff works, you know, that type of stuff. Like, you know, like basically taking and creating something from something else, something totally new from something else. Like, like one of my friends actually took the battery out of an RC car and created his very own, you know, tattoo machine, ink holder, all that stuff out of an RC car. And now look at him. He's got a major company going for himself. Like, you know, he's actually working out of, I forget where he's working at, but, you know, he does tattooing for a living now. And his first tattoo machine was a homemade one. And so, you know, like, and I've had people tell me I need to be doing tattooing, but do you know how long it takes just for you to get an apprenticeship there? Plus, you have to, anymore, you have to have graduated high school. You have to have done all this crap, which is bullshit. Because back when I was a kid, you never had to do that. If you could prove that you could draw, or that you can, you know, trace out an art piece onto somebody's skin, then you were good enough to tattoo. And yeah, they gave you crap about it. And they did the normal hazing stuff they do. Every shop does it. Alright, if you've watched shows like Inked, LA Inked, or even Tattoo Highway, which is one of my favorites. I love Tattoo Highway and Ant. But they would give the new guy crap. Like if you guys have watched, ever watched Ink, it used to be on TLC all the time. I don't know if it still is or not. But when Dizzle first came to the shop, they gave him crap. Like. He was doing ink runs. He was taking trash out. He was doing stuff that, you know, people that are new normally have to do. And his first tattoo was on a grapefruit. And it was just practicing. And then his first actual tattoo was actually on his arm, which was a skull and crossbones. So, you know, like, I do draw from a lot of different artists. And, you know, like... You know, like, I do have, you know, some really good artwork that people have seen and do enjoy. You know, like... But, you know, like, artwork is my livelihood. That's what I grew up doing. That's what I want to continue to do for the rest of my life. But at the same time, you know, I want to be making money off of what I do. I mean, I've had family and friends asking me all the time, why don't you have, you know, stuff being put out to make money off of this? It's like, I have, I've opened up several online stores, several, and nobody takes it seriously. And that's my issue right there is nobody takes it seriously. Like everybody always wants everything for free or they think that the prices that I put out are too expensive. Well, here's a little insight for you guys. The prices that I put out 
for five, ten, twenty dollars, those are a lot cheaper than what half the people out there put. Any other place, you'd be paying forty, fifty, a hundred bucks for the stuff that I put out. You know that, guys. That was just the uh, Kendall saying it's on twenty percent. But it really does piss people off. It even pisses my mom off that, you know, I'm not getting paid for this. You know? Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Alright, what's up guys? I'm back. Sorry about that. But like I was saying guys, like, you know, the stuff I put out is a lot cheaper than what you would get anywhere else. And I'm sorry if I sound pissed off, but it's I have a reason to be pissed. Like, you know, people don't get the, you know, my work, my prices are a lot cheaper than what you would find anywhere else. Yeah, you can go out of your way and spend a thousand, two thousand dollars. But why would you want to do that when you can save yourself money and get something that's, you know, not only unique, but it's just as good. Sorry about that dog came in the room being goofy. He just looked at me and then kind of took off. He literally came in the room, stared at me, and I was like, nope, see ya. <laughs> but, you know, like... Like, you know, it really is stupid that people cannot see that my prices are cheaper than you would get anywhere else. I mean, why pay all that money when you could save yourself money and get something that's just as good and just as unique and just as interesting? Like, I've been trying to do this for so long, and it's hard because of people not taking me serious and that's a major issue for me is people not taking me serious enough to say hey I want to invest my time in you hey I like what you're putting out I like your product I want to help you and that's my issue right there is nobody wanting to do that because they don't want to invest their time or their money into somebody that doesn't you know have the experience but here's my thing if you don't have the experience how the fuck are you supposed to gain experience unless somebody comes along and helps you out that's my thing all right i have no like marketing experience really like 
I had a promotion experience, like, you know, posting stuff to my page saying, hey, check this out. But, like, I don't have that marketing experience that a lot of people have because I couldn't do the marketing classes like I wanted. And the reason being is because I was already booked up to eight classes when I was in my last few years of high school. I was literally doing, you know, half an hour classes in the morning up to noon. And then at noon, you know, I left. So literally from about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning to noon that day, I was taking eight different classes. So I couldn't take those classes. And they weren't available for my grade below junior and senior. They weren't available for those students, which sucked. So, you know, like, I don't have that experience. I'm self-taught. Everything I've done, I've learned on my own. Everything I know how to do and what I can do now, I've learned on my own. And I think people feel threatened by that. Because they feel that somebody who's self-taught, who has the skills that I have, and has the talents that I have for doing artwork, would be successful. But instead of feeling threatened by that, why not bring them in? Let them draw people in. You know, give the underdog a chance. Give the little dude a shot. Give that person that doesn't have, you know, anybody to back them up. Give that person a shot. Give that person that doesn't have any money but has talent a shot. And so, you know, I don't get it. I really just don't get why people feel that having experience is such a big deal. And it's like, dude, we all start from somewhere. We all got to start out somewhere. And plus, here's a point that a lot of my family brings up. Unless somebody gives you that chance and invests in you, Like, you know, unless somebody invests their time and their money into you, how are you supposed to gain any experience? That's my thing. Like, how are you supposed to gain experience if nobody gives you a chance? And that's my thing. I need people to invest in what I do and give me that chance. But nobody's fucking willing to do that, which pisses not only me off, but it pisses a lot of my friends and family off who know I have the talent, who know I have the drive to make it, who know I can make it. Yes, I've proven time and time again that I can do music. Don't get me wrong. I've got a major passion for music. I love doing it. Like, you know, I've done compositions. I've done songs. I've done, you know, instrumentals. I've done all that stuff. But, you know, like... For me, that period of my life is kind of like, you know, not really fading out, but I'm kind of like, you know, putting that aside. You know, I haven't really been able to focus on my artwork very much until now. So, like, you know, right now is the time for me to be focusing on my artwork, putting out everything I do. So, unless someone gives me a shot, how am I supposed to get anywhere? Like, you know, and that's what really gets me is that, like, if a person has no experience, you know, how are they supposed to gain experience unless somebody helps them and says, hey, I'll take you on, I'll show you the ropes, I'll help you to get where you need to be. I mean, yes, of course, I'm still going to run and manage Outcast Records. And help out artists who do need the help. I'm not going to quit that. I'm going to help them to be, you know, self-sufficient. Like, I will continue to do that, yes. Because there aren't any labels out there willing to do that. So, like, 
And you know, I will continue to do that. And yes, I'm proud of what Outcast Records is becoming. I'm glad that it's giving people that I know and care about and that I know have talent a chance like I was not given. Because see, I wasn't given a chance at music. I literally had to take it and make it myself. I had to make my own opportunity. I had to make my own label. I had to do all that because no label believed in me. So I literally had to make my own opportunity and make my own record label and say, hey, this is who I work for. I literally work for myself. So, you know, like, that's, you know, that. But right now, I feel like my time right now is more well spent on focusing on my artwork. Like, that's where I feel like my time needs to be invested right now because I've not done any artwork in a very, very long time. And I mean a very long time. It's been a long time since I've put out any art. I mean, I know a lot of you do like my music, and I appreciate all of you for that. I really do, but like I said, right now, my time is more better spent working on, you know, my artwork and doing that. But all in all, you know, guys, if you guys truly cared about my artwork, why not spend 5 or $10 to buy an art piece off me or buy something that you know will help me? Because you know what I would do with that artwork money that you guys, you know what I would do with that money that you guys buy my artwork with? I would put it right back into it. I would put it right back into selling my stuff. And, you know, I might save up a little bit here and there to, you know, save up for a new computer and save up for all of that. So I can continue to do what you guys love. Like, without your guys' help, I cannot do this. Without your guys' help. I mean, yeah, I do have the tools. But I don't have, like, I mean, I do have the tools, but not in the way that I need them to run. In order to do that, I need to get a new PC. I need to get a new desktop or laptop or whatever. In order for that to happen, though, I need your guys' help. If you guys really want to see me make a living at what I do, I need you guys to push my stuff. I need you guys to, you know, spread word about everything I do as far as my artwork goes. Because, like, you know, I take my work very seriously. Come on, guys. Sorry about that, guys. And I just seen the last comment, dude. What is a... What'd you do? Take a hot dog and put it in a taco? Man, what the hell is a taco dog? <laughs> that one sounds interesting, though. <laughs> But seriously, dude, a taco dog actually does sound interesting. I mean, I just ate a little bit ago, but that actually sounds good. And Matt, you might... And Matt, what you should do, man, run that by Taco Bell. Next time you can get out and go to Taco Bell, talk to their manager, see if you can run that by them, see what they think. I think that'd be a good idea. I think you might be on to something there, man. I really do. The hell is this? He's not dead? Like I said, dude, run that by the Taco Bell manager next time you go out to Taco Bell or next time you can get out. Because that could be the next big thing. Like, I can actually see Taco Bell putting that out. I really could. So next time you're out, man, definitely see if you can talk to the manager and talk to them about that and see what they think. But, you know, 
All I'm saying, guys, is that, you know, if you guys truly do support what I do, then why don't you guys, you know, push my stuff? And that's one thing I don't understand, though. Like, at all. Like, everybody likes what I put out, but yet nobody wants to invest. And that's a major problem. Because they always want shit for free. And I'm not willing to give shit out for free. I mean, yes, there are certain people. There are very, there's a very select few people that I will give my stuff to for free. The reason why I would give that to those people for free? Because they deserve it. They've shown me their loyalty. They've shown me that, you know, they do support me. And they've supported me for a very, very, very long time. And they've actually shared my stuff on their page. They've, you know, done what they could. But with that being said, guys, I am going to try to sit down right now and work on the Underground Ink store. And so once I get it put up, I will be doing a live stream of the grand opening of it. So be ready for that. And maybe today, and maybe tomorrow, I don't know. But with that being said, guys, this has been Chance, and I am definitely out of here, man. And like I said, Matt, definitely run that by the Taco Bell manager. See if you can talk to him or one of the employees or whatever. And see if you can't get somebody to take you seriously on that. Because that could be a new thing for Taco Bell. You never know. Like, all you can do is try and be, hey, you know, like, Check this out. This is what it, this is the new, you know, food I came up with called a taco dog. See what they just run by them and see what they think, man. But as for the